Today, I want to share my opinions on the many implications of intersectionality and how whether they help achieving social equality. Intersectionality theory is often misunderstood as how the combination or intersection of personal identity affect how they are privileged or discriminated in the society. For example, a white woman is disadvantaged by gender but privileged by race. However, as Gary Edwards pointed out, if the intersectionality does not create new problems, we can fight each problem at their cost, be it sexism, racism, or poverty. And that's what intersectionality is actually about, the emergence of new problems at the intersection. And Gary Edwards then claims that using individual experiences as proofs of such emergence is a form of methodological idealism because other people cannot verify it for themselves. So yeah, if you all you have is anecdotes to back up your claim, maybe you're just picking those turn out to be in your favor. And I can think of other reasons why the experiences can be taken as face value as well. Our experiences are limited. Individuals also have vested interest in themselves and might be biased to what they are told to find, in this case, oppression, resulting in a worldview of everything is sexist, everything is racist, etc. And that's why we have empirical approaches that combine many experiences to find the common denominator. But that is not to say that personal experiences are useless. You see, human languages suck. People aren't perfect communicators or listeners. And there are things we haven't made a word for yet. So, yeah. And the experiences, however, simply contains more information. It, it should be useful as inspirations when we try to discover something new. But I will be very cautious to use individual experiences as proof. And this brings us to the whole ally thing, such as feminist ally or black movement ally. I'm really troubled by this idea and how they are supposed to uh, mostly listen and not speak over a non-ally. Because creating two classes within the movement and one higher than the other for their lived experiences of oppression, which can only come from being women or being blacks, feels rather like biological determinism. Again, lived experiences are useful, but doing actual researches and developers in the arguments are just as, if not more useful. Don't treat people's ideas as worth less just because they aren't a true Scotsman. And all this is without considering how we are already biased towards individual testimonies of suffering rather than empirical data. But everything else being equal, lived experiences of disadvantage is not the same for everyone. If you never had long hair, you never had to worry about those dipping into your meal, resulting in curly flavored hair, which is yummy. <laughs> but seriously, same is for disabilities. When you can see, you meant have no idea why those brails on every elevator button is important. Without those, a blind person cannot tell which floor it is. And that is often called a privilege. I do think the use of the word privilege is kind of misleading though, because unlike uh, disabilities, identities such as race or gender or being in minority group is not as clear cut an advantage or disadvantage. If individuals recognize themselves as oppressed by the society, uh, it might deny them their agency in turning the differences they have into an advantage. Of course, again, it is useful to teach people discriminations others face because when you never live through it, it might feel that the discrimination doesn't exist. But it should be used when we argue what policies to make rather than everyday life because, I, again, I'm afraid just living for the individuals to decide what discrimination is in their everyday life and have them calm it out will result in vigilante justice. With all that said, I still believe there can be new problems at certain intersections. One would be the context of discrimination, because different cultures can have different stereotypes. I think we can all agree some guy from China's stereotype of Japanese people would be quite different than that of an average Canadian white dude, right? The other problem is money. For example, if you cannot afford a car, you might lose opportunity on certain jobs that require driving. So discrimination would affect communities that are already poor more severely. You end up with both general and group specific problems. But as a principle to predict new problems, I'm not so sure about intersectionality. 
And those are my thoughts on how intersectionality may inform or enhance egalitarianism, along with some criticisms I digested.、Um, but feminism is not really my major or anything, so be, please be careful taking my word for it. And if you find something contradicting what I say or ha- just have some thoughts, feel free to leave those in the title section below. And thanks for watching this video, and DFTBA.